the GB News presenter, Neil Oliver. Neil, very good afternoon to you. Thanks for your time, as ever. Um, Shall we start with that YouGov poll? I, I don't know about you, but I, I'm, I'm stunned to the point of disbelief that half of those polled, and it wasn't a small sample, 4,500 people, half of them said they'd like the rules on quarantine, self-isolating for up to 10 days. Obviously, that depends on how you do with the test. But some type of quarantine system based on testing to remain in place, in quotes, forever. My goodness. I, I, I struggle also to, to take that in. I, I can only imagine that it's, it's a product of the atmosphere that has prevailed for the last two years. You know, people were encouraged, driven really, to be terrified of COVID and everything to do with the pandemic. Um, you know, the, the mask wearing, the, the social distancing, all of, the, all of those behaviours that in a relatively, you might have said, a short period of time have become absolutely embedded in, in, in the behaviour of so many people that they turn to them instinctively uh, and, and feeling the need to be protected from the outside world and from strangers and all the rest of it. It's, I don't think it's any surprise, but it's very, very worrying, you know, looking into the future, uh, if this is to be the, the attitude of, Maybe well, let's say half of the population based on that on that survey. I, I find myself at the other extreme. You know, I, I consider that the emergency is over. The pandemic is over. I know many people would challenge my my amateur assessment of the situation, but I just I just want to get back to normal. And so I, for one, I, I celebrate the fact that, that the Westminster government is, is saying that it's going to take the line that it will. But we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, but we know, don't we, Neil, there's permanent scarring that's been left by this. I don't just mean in things like on the oncology backlog, but I mean even in, in terms of the way we relate to each other as human beings. Yes, absolutely. There's been something, something profound has happened. Uh, something fundamental has happened. I would never have believed that it could be achieved in such a short space of time, but there you go, it has uh, and I, I don't think it's too much of an exaggeration to say that for many people, uh, the, the behaviours associated with with COVID, with the pandemic, have become religious. I think I think for many people, the routines, uh, the wearing of face masks, uh, and, and the following of all the rules, and, and being seen to be either part of the good crowd or part of the bad crowd, uh, uh, listening to the to the words from the priesthood, being the scientists, the good scientists, protecting the church, which is the NHS. And within a within a two year period, I think it has it has ingrained itself very deeply in people. Uh, but there you go; it's been like a mass social experiment, and and now we're seeing the results. I mean, when it comes to Scotland mm. uh, and Nicola Sturgeon taking a different path, well, she always has. She has always in her in her desperation to be seen to be different from Westminster, different from Boris Johnson. She's always taken her own path and, and varied what Scotland was going to do r relative to what England uh, was going to do. Um, and, and so we find ourselves in this situation. I, I find it's almost existential. You know, I, I wonder at the extent to which Great Britain is a United Kingdom anymore. You know, who is flying this plane? If the yeah. Prime Minister in Westminster says one thing, but national leaders in Scotland and indeed in Wales... Uh, can, can say something else entirely. I, I do. I do wonder at the extent to which, in amongst everything else, you know, are, are we a United Kingdom or not? Uh, and Neil, just just on the point about the priesthood—that's the word you used—of uh, of some scientists. I mean, I was I was shocked today to see people like Devi Sridhar, uh, you know, very eminent, globally eminent scientist, advisor to the Scottish government on COVID, coming out and, and saying, making a, a political statement, really, and saying, you know, what Boris Johnson has announced in terms of getting to the, the lifting of restrictions on COVID is, is something to displace and uh, deflect criticism from him politically. That is a political judgment. I know the, the chief medical officer has retweeted something which has upset Tories in Scotland as well. I mean, it's one thing for scientists to offer us guidance on uh, our elected officials' guidance on decisions that they then subsequently take. It's another thing, it seems to me, for those unelected scientists to be actually wading into politics. Well, I would agree with that completely. I, I'm, I've, I've been amazed by, by, by many of that particular scientist's uh, pronouncements uh, she has taken a political line and and she has been you know she has it would appear she has sought to align herself politically with 
the Scottish government and to and to stand in opposition to to the position coming out of Westminster. I've I've been amazed by by Devi Sridhar's stance all along, but she's only one only one amongst several. Uh, but I, I do think though it, it is indicative as I was saying, of that idea that th this has moved beyond something medical and something scientific into something that feels much, much more like a, like a religion. And if it's not a religion, then it, it's a case of, of people being invited to say whether they belong to the, to the good people or the bad people, you know, the clean or the unclean. I, th I think it's got, it's got, it has got very deep in terms of the way in which it has ingrained itself in the way we think about each other, the way we relate to each other. You know, the, the masking, I, I have found that very difficult from the beginning, regardless of the, of the justifications or not for masks. I've found only looking at people's eyes on the street uh, very difficult because I, I realised how used I was to gauging people's attitude and mood and, and how they were relating to me based on on reading their expressions and, and being denied that, I have felt that a profound distance has grown between me and my and my fellow citizens because I, I, because I don't feel I can hear them or communicate with them properly. Uh, and I found I found the whole thing very very difficult. Yeah. Well, uh, the, the other thing about Scotland that troubles me is is the fact that Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon and her government have voted to or have decided to retain the, the emergency powers. That is existential as well. The, the, the very fact that they were released because of an emergency, and England and Westminster seems to be saying uh, or suggesting that the emergency is over, and yet in Scotland the emergency powers will be retained, which I think is indicative of of something that's a, that's across Europe, across the world. Uh, Jacinda Ardern, uh, Justin Trudeau, uh, Emmanuel Macron, all sorts of world leaders, national leaders have grabbed at power and having got power, I mean, as many people have said, there's nothing so permanent as temporary government measures. And if if those uh, controls on our lives can be retained, even after the emergency might be said to be passed, then I, I, I do wonder if those restrictions will ever be taken away. Well, you know, those, those masks may inhibit communication, but you continue to uh, communicate very, very clearly and forcefully. Uh, and lyrically, if you don't mind me saying, Neil, thanks very much indeed. Neil Oliver, uh, join us from Sterling there. Thanks, um, Colin. Well, that's Neil's very personal perspective on things. Alice Grant is with me in the studio for the next hour or so. Uh, you were nodding vigorously at times during Neil Oliver's uh, soliloquy there. Why? Yes, I thought a lot of what Neil said was very pertinent, and especially the fact that um, COVID restrictions and the whole hysteria around um, COVID has indeed become very political. And of course, because here we're talking about our liberty, and also the future of the economy and our society as a whole. So naturally, there are some political lines that are being drawn. People are entitled, Alice, aren't they, just to look at what Boris Johnson said uh, at PMQs yesterday and point out the fact that there are some members of SAGE who feel not all the data's in yet. Perhaps it was a little bit premature. I know the Prime Minister's saying the end of the month and it's dependent on the data, but there, were, there are people, respectable scientists, saying, actually, Prime Minister, this, this feels like opportunism. Well, there are many scientists on the other side as well who are saying that actually um, most of the SAGE models have been far, far over-exaggerated and over-dramatised and the outcomes which we've been relying on for the past two years have been worst-case scenarios, almost none of which have actually turned out to materialise. Great. So, to be honest, I'm very happy to hear that the Prime Minister is going to lift restrictions. I think it's um, you know, it's a long time coming. We're going to look at some yeah, of those worst case yeah. scenarios and some of the modelling and the defects of the modelling yes, with yes, Jamie Jenkins, indeed. statistician, a little later on. Uh, stay tuned for that. Alice, for now, thanks very much indeed. Thank Back you. to you soon.